You had a walk-in, a volunteer, who came to you 10 years ago saying that he could infiltrate a North Korean friendship group in Denmark. You said that wasn't really big enough for you to investigate, but you'd stay in contact, and if it became bigger, then you could revisit it. It did. I used to work for the British Security Service, otherwise known as MI5, so the film team has asked me in to debrief you. He is a um, retired chef. Mm -hmm. He resides in the suburbs of uh, Copenhagen, together with his uh, family. Do you happen to know if he's told his wife what he was doing? I don't think so. Mm. Are born, they're glad. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we are living Yeah, take one. And over those early years, your mole had progressed up the hierarchy of the North Korean Friendship Association till he was in a position of influence in Europe and you the head guy in Europe. He's the president of the Korean Friendship Association, KFA. Do you think Alejandro is dangerous? Yes, I do. I have contacts up to our Marshal Kim Jong-un. I can prepare at all levels with all our ministers. You brought in a fake businessman. He is asked to play the part of Mr. James. Our minimum investment is 50 million uh, euro. Weapons, we can build submarines factory. We can build ta ta tank factories. Um, suddenly the North Koreans get very excited about the possibility of, of weapons trading or drug smuggling or whatever. And deals are cut, contracts are signed. So what I want to think about is, where does that leave us now? So we agreed on building a factory outside North Korea that would uh, make weapons and methamphetamine. And weapons. did the Koreans have any preferences when it came to countries or suggestions? Um, Uganda. I went to visit Alejandro in Tarragona, and uh, I was the might up with the camera. And... What we are doing now is big methamphetamine and what weapons. The mold speaks about how they are going to produce methamphetamine and, and weapons. And then Alejandro Kaut Wiener says, When talking about the business, do never use again that word, OK? I don't know. I think you should take care. And he comes back with such a bug detector. This is a bug detector. It will detect any kind of the bugs that you may carry. And I have a camera in my, in my mm -hmm. chest here, and, and I start to tell him there's something in the room. Here's a If something's going to happen here, it's over. <laughs> you have something, RF, radio frequency? I have the car key for rent a car. I have a small uh, bag on the table, mm -hmm. so I have a car key in. Maybe it's because it's uh, take some signals down. This is by remote control. Okay. So he was sending the signal okay. to the... Okay. But this is, I sweep it many times. We don't okay. have anything please, here. Please, please uh, do that every time before we come. Yes, yes. Okay. So this is a necessary tool. Yeah. We are not talking a small thing. If this no. goes down, there are many millions going down. Yeah. So also James has to understand, this is not a child game. No, I, sa I, also, I said to him, listen. To be serious. Yes. Because it's as easy as I do like yeah. this to you. Yeah. I can put a mic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can. Hey, yeah. Just, hey, hello, welcome to Barcelona. And then, and then you, don't, you don't have no idea that you are broadcasting information. It's good, we need that. Especially. I, I, will, 
especially the, the good one, the good ones, the good Russian ones. This is just basic. Mm. All right, so that's all, no? We discussed yeah. all the issues? Yeah. to feel bad. <sighs> have a lot of pictures on my mind and it's like I just, now I just need to have this off because it's, it's did something to me. It's like this was a close call. So, just to be fully clear here, he was fully briefed on the plans to build this secret factory in Uganda. Love the idea. Okay. Yeah. In Uganda, Mr. James would be the playmaker. Yeah, okay. And to have it all on camera, okay. he brought a photographer who was filming for a corporate video about his life as a man of international mystery. And the mole, he brought his hidden camera. Hvor sidder knappen på? Top 10. Sidder på vores siden. Der. Yes. Yes, der er rødt. Vi ses. So what happens next? Then the North Korean arrives to Kampala. Ah, you're there. Oh, good to see you again. Morning. 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 Nice to see yeah. you. Morning. One of them, he was one of the people in the basement while I was signing. Is that? Yeah, that's the person we named Stoneface. And who is he? That's uh, Mr. Danny, the international arms dealer from North Korea. Mm -hmm. Please come in. Oh, you can you can walk in. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. And I think that Mr. James will come shortly, so then we can talk a little ourselves. So. Earlier this month, North Korea threatened to fire missiles towards the U.S. territory of Guam. This provoked the U.S. president into threats of war. I read in the news that. Um, but the DPRK had a successful missile test this morning. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't have any concerns, <laughs> but but I just think with this president Donald Trump, he's he's a crazy man. Well, what did he say? North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury, like the world has never seen. <laughs> We are continuing to the launch missile until the America and the hostile country stop to, okay. you know, the provoca provocate our country. Mm. There you are. Oh, hi. Hi. Oh. Hi. Nice to see you. Good. Hi. Great to see you. Two seconds. Just close here. The idea was to buy an island and build a weapon factory underground. So I've been looking at an island. Yeah, yeah. This island is perfect. It's in the middle of Victoria Lake. Yeah. So if airplane comes down, people on the mainland would not even see. Souvenir. <laughs> there to check out the island. How would you find the island in the first place? Oh. Google. <laughs> I 
I found a place where I can buy private islands. And I could get it for five million dollars. This, this idea is a very good idea. We construct the factory building, and then after that, we must provide some equipment. Yeah, but equipment depends on the product. So you purchase from, the, from us. What we can do, for example, the missiles or the several kinds of missiles. So you bring your own aircraft to our country by under the name of the humanitarian aid. Yeah? Yes. You can bring some, you know, the clothing, some food, and then you can load all the contractor items, and then you pay money for us, and then you fly back. We can provide you everything from solar ammunition to the things itself, as well as electro warfare item also. Radar, all the communication system, everything you can do. So we wanted to go out and see if it could actually be used for the purpose. Mm -hmm. And before we went there, the real estate man on it, he said that he had told the people on the island, because the lip people on the island, that we were there to build a hospital. So the whole village mm -hmm. is there to welcome us. Someone, please go check us around. Your sister, brother. What I was saying to introduce you as a friendly party to the people on the island, because we don't want them to know that it is a transaction that is going on between the landlord and us. And, and, and this is why you told them that uh, I was there to build a hospital? Yes, yes the hospital. Yes. Okay, okay, yes. I see. So I need your cooperation. Eh? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, now let us pray. I bless these people in Jesus' name. We want to thank you for bringing us... This guy, he said to me, I have told people on the island you're going to build a hospital. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> I don't look like a hospital guy. <laughs> My duty is to remove those people on the land without causing friction. Okay. Yes. And how fast can we uh, have them move? Maximum is four months. That is included in the price, right? Uh, yeah, it's good. Yeah. So this is where they play football. Yeah. I think there could be a great landing field here. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, 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 very much so. Okay, okay perfect. perfect. Okay, that, that is good, yeah, that is good. But now situation, now America, watch our country. American the intelligence the agency, they should not know about this. So the idea is, and this is their idea, to build a hotel above, some kind of resort, and that can explain why we have a landing ground there. Everything else will be built on underground. Now I'll show you one on the other side, and then we are done. Then you, yeah. you have an idea of all the things. Yeah. Did you get an impression that they had something out of the box? So they'd done this before, and they had a standard plan, a standard look for disguising these sort of facilities. They worked with other people like this. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they, they already said that. We have the engineer, we have the knowledge. It was not a discussion about, I should come up with those ideas. Mm -hmm. It's good. Good, good. Because from the beginning, I'm an investor. Mm -hmm. I invested it, I think it's a good idea. But the architect about the whole structure with them. Bye-bye. I was feeling really bad when we left the island. There lived thousands on this island. Thousands and thousands, they're willing to throw off the island in four months if I put down $5 million. 
How can that be done? Was the government involved? We had a sit down established by the broker with government officials. Mm -hmm. I was quite open. I say, we want to do something on the island. I cannot tell you what it is, but we want 100% privacy. We don't want any interference. And I want that, otherwise we don't want to buy the island. If this fly, we can move very fast. We can get the people out of the island and we can start uh, doing this. So, sure. How does that sound? That sounds uh, very interesting. I've been working with the government for the last 15 years. What is the project about? It's going to be a golf resort, a marina, it's going to be a, a, a health, health spa. We still want to give back to society. We have CSR obligations. Then we buy some schools or, or something like that. Okay. We want clearance that we can land planes and take them off from our island. That the, the, the aerodrome license can be, as long as it's part of the investment plan. This part will fly. That's sweet music to our ears. Yes, that's exactly That's what I do. <laughs> Give me an amen. Amen, brother. We was really crazy as well. We actually got promised that they could actually uh, had custom protect our island. Just can we pray together, Heavenly Father, bless our project, bless our ideas. Amen. 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 That's very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> So although the true purpose of the project was not revealed to the Africans, buying the island in Uganda and using it for a secret weapons and drug factory seemed to be right up the alley of the North Koreans, which was kind of important to prove. But it did not stop there, because while in Uganda, the North Korean arms dealer, Mr. Danny, was ready to take the joint venture a step further. When will you be there? Okay, I look forward to see you. Take care. Bye-bye. You said you had uh, some things you needed to move as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for example, all items to the Middle East country, the destination is from Syria. Mm. How about Syria? Syria? Well, what kind of items they, they want there? Okay. If you if you if can do, you have the capability to transport all items from our countries to the media. And you give the signal and then I'll go to the easy, we can be discussed more detail. North Koreans needing to move armaments to Syria is actually a very interesting piece of information. So please allow me to digress a little bit. Historically, North Korea and Syria have been friends for many years, and the North Koreans were even building a nuclear reactor in the Syrian desert until the Israelis decided to blow it up. During the civil war in Syria, the New York Times published a story about how North Korea was helping the Syrian regime with its chemical weapons program. At the same time, small arms from North Korea have been found in the hands of fighters from the Islamic State. But most likely, these weapons were stolen from the Syrian army. So, when the North Korean arms dealer, Mr. Danny, wants to send bombs and projectiles to Syria, the end user is probably the Syrian regime. So what did you say to Danny when he suggested that you help with the Syria war? I said yes. I would like to do that. And then he said that uh, then you have to go to Beijing. Something I still feel bad about is sending Mr. James to Beijing to meet with North Korean arms dealers. People who are in the know about the dark side advised us strongly against it. Because if the Chinese intelligence service would shine their lights on Mr. James, it would be another ball game entirely. But Mr. James is a man who craves action 
and I am a filmmaker who craves sensation, so he went anyway. Before I'm going to Beijing, I've been in contact with Mr. Danny, who say he had passed it on to his collaboration partner, and uh, he will take it forward. Sit down, and as custom, I brought you something from Denmark. Wow. Oh. One for you, and, and one for you. It's the first day. There's only two gentlemen arriving, and one of them introduced himself to be the main guy of the weapon industry. Both men are North Korean. I know this because sometimes they speak Korean to each other in the dialect of the North. Clearly, the two men are in the know about the island in Uganda, which seems to be a top priority. But can they trust Mr. James? I don't know if Danny has already talked to you about the business we are doing. You work right now? A business, okay. Yeah. He said to me, we have a collaboration with Syria, mm -hmm. but our problem is to give them the armory. Okay. Do you think you can help us? Is, is that correct? Yeah, Syria. You have contacts in Syria? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If you give me a list yeah. of the people that you officially not can contact, then I can contact them because I can travel here and there on behalf of you. The man smoking here? No, outside? I don't know. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I go to the toilet. Which one is the toilet? The toilet is out there. And um, no, <laughs> it's uh, in there. Okay. Asking for names of clients and contacts in the world of arms dealing seems to be a showstopper. And actually, I was kind of, kind of sad when I was in North Korea. It was in January, so it was so very... The square? Yeah. Or maybe the square. Yes, I have. When? In January. I was away. Yeah. Who invited you? Uh, Khan. Mr. Khan. Yeah. The second day we're meeting, then suddenly the one referred to as Stoneface appears. And what was the power dynamic between these two? Yeah, and you see, this is the whole strange thing because the hierarchy is very difficult. Good to see you again. <laughs> Was the enigmatic stone face summoned to Beijing in order to verify the identity of Mr. James? He never says a word, he does not even smile, so we can never know for sure about stone face. But it is safe to say that his appearance made a difference. We should check everything. Very carefully, very carefully. Even these words have ears and eyes, you know. Yeah. We are looking for the right person who's handling it means for transportation, for, for example. This one. Driver. Gun. Air to air missiles. At this moment, we are saying the control by the country and uh, they are waiting for send by this one. Are you confirmed you buy the island within two, three, days, three months? Are you well, confirmed? What I will do is that I will fly down there personally and stay down there until it's bought. The, the only reason why I went to Uganda in the first place was because you told me to. 
head of Uganda lawyer, my close partner. So if you need, I'll help you. Okay. This, right? Please consider their ways of life and their ways of skills, the working style is quite different, you and us. <laughs> Yes, please, yes, tomorrow I forgot. <laughs> uh, please consider it. I expect that it's just unique. So when did they contact you again? They actually went a long time. Hmm. Over a year. My actor, Mr. James, seemed to be taking on a life of his own. That was a concern. Another concern was the mole going back to Spain to brief Alejandro Cao de Binas about the tourist project, the code name chosen for the underground weapons and drugs factory in Uganda. By now the mole had been undercover for more than seven years and paranoia was running high. So far, no intelligence service had caught on to us but every time we met with Alejandro Cao de Pinas, we had to consider the possibility that he was being followed by spooks. At the same time, we also had to consider the risk that Alejandro would upgrade his counter surveillance with new devices for discovering microphones. From now on, the mole would only meet with Alejandro in a hotel chosen by us, with security on standby next door, in case his cover was blown. <laughs> Soon Alejandro would spring another surprise on the mole, but first a piece of nostalgia. You see, going to North Korea with Alejandro as my tour guide back in 2006 left a long-lasting impression on me. Apparently, I had also left a long-lasting impression on Alejandro Cao de Binos, and so had my first documentary about North Korea, The Red Chapel. The film stars two Danish-Korean comedians who go to Pyongyang and lampoon the leadership, which means that I am not Mr. Popular in North Korea anymore. It's, it's poetry about the independence mm. of the cat. A little pussy cat. A, a little pussy. Pussy, that what yes, does a, it a cat, a cat. Pussy, or uh, with... No, no a uh, cat. In English, you can say pussy cat or cat. It's, it's you know, a cat. Pussy. Meow. Meow, pussy. Pussy, yes. what does it mean? Max Brugger. I still have this passport, you know? Brugger and the other fucker. Yeah. First trip. It's by me. They come to me. They were there more than one? Yes, they have been three times before making red chapel to North Korea. Suddenly, I received a call from Pyongyang. Alejandro, you know what happened in the red chapel? I know nothing. I was not in the meetings. No. I only brought them in the first yes. trip. I, I don't even know that they come second time, third time. I said, you know what? You deserve that. I said to them, for not telling me. They took advantage of you. They cheat you. They fuck you. And now they are making a fortune. Thanks. And then if you were waiting, you could have stopped it. Of course, yeah. I know sarcasm. I know how they think. Yeah. In the moment that they say, pussy, pussy cat, I will say to him, I will smash the face of Brugger yeah. and put him in the mine. Yeah. And he will smash his face in North Korea because he cannot prosecute me because he's under the laws of the country. Yeah. So I will do that. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? Anyway. Never mind. There's nothing. Sarcasm aside, Alejandro Cao de Pinas is a man who thinks big. During the meeting in Barcelona, Alejandro tells the mole of an ambitious plan for a triangle deal involving Mr. James, North Korea, and a Jordanian businessman. This is Hisham El Tasuki from Jordan, who wants to provide uh, fuel to North Korea. And Alejandro gets this wise idea that we can make a triangle deal. Which so, is? Which is that we send the fuel to North Korea and James get the payment in the arms part and pharmaceutical parts to the island in mm -hmm. Uganda. The general idea is that that's what you mean. We can triangle. Exactly. And no one will ever know where. Okay, now I get it. I understand, no?
If the mole could get Mr. James to Spain, Alejandro will introduce him to his plans for triangular trading. So we set up the meeting in a yard in the harbor of Barcelona. Hello, my friend. Long time no see. I must say that. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Oh, be careful. <laughs> good to see you. Very young, younger and younger. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying my best. Normally, I don't drink, but today I would like a. Can you make me one of these? Yeah, sure. Bloody Mary. It's good. <laughs> so let's start first by the triangle. Yeah. <clears throat> so the concept is very easy. When we were looking for oil due to the sanctions, I received the order from Pyongyang, from our government, to look for different sources. Someone willing to sell oil for to us that doesn't mind sanctions. So. This is a deal that our company, Narae, wanted to do with Mr. Dasuki. Mr. Kang told me, look, we are also doing the business at the same time with Mr. James. So why don't we make a triangle? You, instead of you paying to our country, which is a little complicated because as you know, the sanctions and so on, and the nature of the business especially. So instead of going direct, why don't James pay? Like, you are buying the oil, let's say. You are buying this oil, not the DPRK, although we are the one receiving. And then from this amount, then can be deducted from the contract and for the operations that you are going to realize in the tourist business. So we will receive uh, the weapons, mm -hmm. and then we give him money, and then he gives oil. And he don't have a problem with selling oil to NK. Not at all. So, so he knows how to to get the oil there without getting the boat stuck. Exactly. Yes. So it's kind of pirate. Yes, yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, what is what, what what is your position in all this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the person that makes the things work. Let's say like that. Okay. Like a person that is. Uh, arranging everything at international level. Okay, matchmaker, they could say, us. <laughs> <laughs> we could say that normally most things comes through me. I'm in the middle of many, many of the most important transactions of our country. And uh, I hold positions, which I cannot tell you in our country, but a very high level in the ministries, okay? It's a ministry that is over all the ministries. So an agreement like this, you can sign on their behalf. Sure. Exactly. Uh, and, 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 and guarantee my security. Uh, exactly. OK, let's see. They just think I will hand over money. And I'm like, I'm not handing over any money. I, ha I have met you. I have trust in you. But I want to meet this Mr. Tasugi <laughs> face to face. So my two proxies, the Mole and Mr. James, went to Jordan to find out if there really is a man named Al Dasuki who wants to triangle with them and North Korea. Please? Hello, James. Hello. I'm Mr. I'm James. 
A nice man in the reception. So, suddenly it happens. <laughs> Hello. Nice Welcome. Take a seat. Thanks. 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 This is you. Salud. And uh, Hello, just for me to understand the, the kind of business of okay. you. Yes. My business now, I can do for two things. For two chemical and for petroleum. I make some relation with some friends. Good business, good idea, trust, that's all what you need. If you have a lot of money, all of the dollars are open to you. So for your share, you pay off uh, the government so, so we are safe in the business? It's not, not your name, it's my spin. It's my okay, side. okay. No, not your names, not any names. Not my name also, tell you, I be friendly with you. Not my name. No, 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 of I course. Know, because I must keep my name clean. You have a middle man who takes the blame if there's a problem. Yeah, this is what I do. Because get a thing to North Korea right now is a bit tricky. Yeah. <laughs> you have satellite off your ass all the way. Each time when he spoke to Korea, when he came back, I can't even change the name of the ship. You get again a new name to the ship because you can't, because one time they're going there after I think the breakfast. What's the thing to do? When you import or export, must don't me make me your shipping direct. Must there is point to stop, change document and then go. I tell him if you need, I can do that. You can go try something dangerous, very dangerous. As machine, as anything. I can do this. I know okay. how to do. No, no. I mean oh, I, I guess that's the food. Hello? Please, come in. I just go to the bathroom. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. It's out here, right? Yeah. And we decided to meet up the next day for signing mm -hmm. the contracts. Mm -hmm. Nice to see you again, my see friend. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is a Russian visa for me. This is for Turkey to Hawaii. Ah, okay. Not from out from Russia to Jordan, they must be to Dubai and from Dubai to it. So when you go from Vladivostok, you go out international and you go back to Nampu or something. With another vessel or just things for me? I have to be at least sometime. I can go to that port, main port. Mm -hmm. Or you like me. Sometime that premium cannot go. You must change it in the Antonov side over. Yeah, yeah. If you are not in hurry, take 30, 40 days. Because it takes long way to go from the Yeah, they need to, day. exactly. So that's kind of them. Yeah. To be far away from the control and the yeah. supply or some plan. You have a great pleasure. Give you contract, how much can sell it per year? 10,000, 10 million, even to you, and you can sell it anyway. So okay. You. That is my yeah. best work. This is ah, okay. Yeah, 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 I understand. It's like mafia. Okay, we are the mafia. Yeah. <laughs> you and me and we are the same. We are the same, yeah. 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 Finally. I also need a picture with Mr. Dasubi for Alejandro. Alejandro, <laughs> where you go? Yeah. So was the contract actually signed? They signed the contract. For how much? Uh, I think at that point it was around 3.2 million US dollar. Can you... We'll do it soon. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, not to be rude, but could I have uh, five minutes alone? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just take a sip and I walk out. Do you like any kind of sip? Ah, yeah, I bring my coffee. Uh, I come back in five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Ulrich leaves the room, but I'm still recording uh, the conversation. And then you can ensure that the government would not interfere.
Her er der Suki mentions a major Jordanian power broker, but due to legal reasons, his name cannot be disclosed. Next, the mole was asked to go to Sweden because a package was waiting for him to be picked up at the North Korean embassy in Stockholm. Hello, Ray. I'm here. How are you? I'm fine. The sun is so beautiful today. Yeah, it's... it's so, Kang wrote me. He sent this photo to ah, check here. Thank you. Thank you. I went to the embassy in Stockholm mm -hmm. to pick up some drawings. What you see here is actually a North Korean design of how we can build our weapon slash pharmaceutical factory mm -hmm. in Uganda. Ah, okay. It looks great. I don't know. Outside it looks a resort, yeah. Exactly, but, uh, and that's, that's that's why we need but to make inside it. Inside it looks so smart, you know. Yeah. It's like a from movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I might you might saw a movie. <laughs> this is actually how it will look from above. Um of course here. Yeah. It could be, yeah, we could do. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. <laughs> What about the hotel uh, title? How do I, how, what are you going to title? What title are you going to? Uh, I know that they're going to have some meetings with the investor about all those details now. Not, First, not something which smells typically. Exactly. Yeah. So. I, I hope it will be successful, yeah. I hope to. Just accept the uh, confidential. Confidential, yeah. of course, yeah. So, if something happens, our embassy does know nothing about it. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you for the ride. Yes. Hello. Hello. This is one of the staff of Mr. James. He will lead us to the room. Yeah. Then, in this tale of intrigue and deception, a new character made his appearance. It was Mr. Ju, a North Korean envoy who came to Copenhagen to do business with Mr. James. Last time the world met Mr. Ju was in the Australian version of 60 Minutes, where he acts as a smiling mouthpiece for the regime in Pyongyang. We were weak, but now we are strong. Single-hearted unity, a great leadership, and we have the ICBMs. So I usually say to Donald Trump, come, come, come to me. I will choke you with my H-bombs. Wow. I plan my trip to Denmark in order to expand the tourism market into Scandinavian countries. And uh, what is your connections to our collaboration partners? In, uh, I have a close friendship for, with Mr. Kang Long Kang for many years. Mr. Kang asked me to become a representative of the Nare Trade Company to sign the contract. So I have a document here. And also, he wants me to uh, work as, uh, if necessary or as the communicator between for this tourism project. In Uganda. Uh, in Uganda. Yes. The contract stipulates the triangle deal in print. Oil, purchased by Mr. James, goes to North Korea, and in return, North Korea sends products and technicians to the island in Uganda, where tourist goods will be made. And here you go. Thank you, indeed. And you have my pen. <laughs> Danish tradition. Danish tradition, actually, you have the whole sort of pen. But... <laughs> And did Alejandro know about this deal as well? He was, he was well aware of it. Yeah. He was well aware of it. Yeah. Skål! 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 Skål. <laughs> Just do one try. Oh, exactly. Let's try this one. Now, the North Koreans would discover that Denmark also is a very alcoholized country. And Skål! All in one. Skål. Look at him! No, 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 you, you, you have to take it. Kimchi! Kimchi! So we visited the, the Little Mermaid. Uh, but they were so drunk that I don't think they even remember. 
Had Mr. James chosen to honor the contract he signed in Copenhagen, he would have to wire millions of dollars to Aldasugi in Jordan as payment for oil to North Korea. In return, North Korea would deliver manpower and products to the island of Mr. James. And so goes the triangle trade. You can try and go. Exactly. From his office in Jordan, Aldasugi was now threatening legal action unless Mr. James honored their contract and showed him the money. Meanwhile, the North Korean weapons dealer, Mr. Danny, who we met in Uganda, was pushing for a meeting with Mr. James in order to speed up the business. They met in a hotel in Cambodia, where Mr. James was taken to the next level in the circle of trust. He gave me a new order list while I was down there. So, may I explain? Yeah. Bye -bye, yeah? The special item is here. That is not a not common thing, yeah? Okay. The number one. Yeah. It's to protect the enemy tank. And then number 11, then protect the drone. Send the impulse, very powerful impulse to the drone, and then drone will be held to drop. A drone like that. In Cambodia, it became apparent that the sanctions are working. The North Koreans are desperate to find clients who will buy their weapons. And it seems like Mr. James is their big white hope. Now, Syria, you know, the IS already defeated. So, so in, in, in this situation, for us, it's very difficult to find the clients who want to buy some of this uh, military armament. If we have any clients, we can supply them through you. If I'm saying, OK, listen, guys, we want to buy a huge amount of weapons, we can get that. And what about the triangulation deal? Where's that left at the moment? We have the island. Yeah. We could start that project tomorrow. So this is where you've left it? Yeah. They still trust you? Yeah. For now? For now. But not for long. The investigation had gone as far as it could, so Mr. James had to disappear. Thanks to my intervention, Mr. James went off the grid and simply vanished no longer answering his phone nor his emails. In short, Mr. James became a ghost. Meanwhile, the mole was taking care of business as the KFA delegate of Scandinavia. First, he went to London to protest against the BBC, together with his comrade in arms, the British delegate of the Korean Friendship Association, Mr. Dermot Hodgson. Hello, everybody. This is Ulrik and Dermot. We are at the BBC, which is the British... British Brainwashing Corporation. BBC. The BBC are continuing their lies about people's career. Then, the mole went to Spain for his last in-person meeting with his president, Alejandro Cao de Pinos. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> you insist, I insist. Okay, okay. Several items were on the agenda. Dermot is British, and I have been in his home. So, frankly speaking, they British like tend this. to be quite dirty. Yeah. yeah. They love dirty, moldy, rusty things. It's like they love yeah, it. Old carpet on the floor. All, not all carpet, but he entered carpet. with the boots full yeah, of mud. Yeah. Mud in the house, yeah. you know? But most important was the sudden disappearance of Mr. James. It's difficult to trust people you don't know. Of course. And even course. people you know, like yes. James. Um, yes, yes. Oh. Yes. yes, no, that really makes us lose a lot of money, a lot of time to you, to me, to Korea. I, I feel myself like a big idiot. I mean, am I the right guy in KFA now? Because I, I feel myself responsible for No, because happening. we know exactly who you are, yeah. and we know who is he. Uh, I have to uh, have some meetings always with this kind of rich man. And mm -hmm. I'm used to this kind of ex exception, people like Mr. Dasuki, who is a very rich man, very powerful, very influential, but very humble person. Mm -hmm. James is an opportunistic person who mm -hmm. just wants yeah. to get whatever and push out to everyone without recognizing the work. Mm -hmm. You have been loyal, even as a servant, okay. more than loyal. loyal. Yeah. Frankly speaking, yeah. I didn't tell to you, yeah. but your way of Treating him, and the way he was treating you, it was from servant to the Lord. Yeah. 
Put me a Bloody Mary. Why do you want Alejandro? Yeah. Then servant Mr. Yeah. Ulrich. Of course, you are my comrade. I, I felt so bad, you know, yeah. when seeing you. But we are playing a game, so exactly. I have to accept I was, that. I was also playing my games for him, for making... Exactly. I know that. That he wants us and he wants... I know that. We are playing... We are playing yeah, the yeah. games. You know that you must have people that you can fully trust. Yeah. Because if only one goes to the CIA, only one, you are fucked forever. Yeah. To top it off, the mole had been chosen as the host of the annual CAFE meeting. It was I who wrote the speeches for the mole, and now he would deliver his final sermon. Dear comrade, the KFA is at war, and we have every right to wage war against our enemies, because one person can change the outcome of history. But what about me, you might ask? What have you been doing as a KFA delegate for Scandinavia? I will here present you the tourist project. Well, here it is. Man, can you take this one down, please? And just this one down the floor. As I had planned it, the mole would share the fruits of the tough secret work he had been doing with his mentor, Alejandro. Beautiful hotel with swimming pools and hotel rooms meeting areas, uh, golf course. Of course, the mole would only use the coded phrases for methamphetamine and weapons, which Alejandro had taught him in the bunker yeah, in Spain. Yeah. When referring to something that you eat, yeah. it's a seafood, yeah. canned seafood. Yeah. And when you are talking about the other thing, you can talking about, for example, let's talk about wood. Wood, uh, wood. wood. Handicraft. Wood handicraft, yeah. Made by hand, by the native people. Yeah. yeah. In those rooms here, it would be possible to produce organic seafood or woodle handicraft. There's built a road up here, which will go up to an uh, airstrip, so we can fly all our products to sell in the world. You're welcome to come up and take pictures if you like. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And sorry. The, uh, Following the annual cafe meeting, one member of the Korean Friendship Association praised the tourist project on the message board of the KFA. Alejandro Cautabenas told the mole to delete everything at once. Also, a member named Jean-Paul left the KFA because he panicked about spying and hacking. At the end of this, I hired the former intelligence officer, Annie Machon. Before she went rogue and became a whistleblower, she was working for the British security service, the MI5. Her exploits as a whistleblower has made her controversial, but that is of no concern to me. I am only interested in her qualifications as a spy. Running long-time undercover agents was her line of work, as was debriefing agents at the end of their missions. If someone has put 10 years of their life into doing something, and they've been very solitary in what they're doing, they do need a chance just to tell someone exactly what they went through. It's almost like a confessional. And of course, you do want to, to reward them at the end of it, even if it's just with a recognition they can't really tell anyone about, apart from perhaps their, their wife or their husband. But it is that recognition that's very important when they've been working undercover for so long. Such as a lavish dinner? A lavish dinner usually works very well, yes. And I want to raise a toast to you both for what you have achieved. Thank you. I think it's probably the um, most impressive private intelligence operation I've ever heard of. Uh, how are you going to protect these two guys from any reprisals from the North Koreans? Regarding Mr. James, he simply refuses to be, <laughs> you know, um, protected or advised about security. OK. Um, we have prepared for an aftercare program for the mole, also taking care of his security. Mm -hmm. And his uh, family? And his family as well. Um, what I am more concerned about regarding the mole is that being the mole has been a part of his identity for more than 10 years. You know, So what will happen when we bring him in? 
entering any form of secret type world is very seductive. I know from personal experience. And for those who have been living a, a double um, life with all the danger and the adrenaline rush and everything, it is incredibly difficult often to go back to mundane reality. In the long run, we all must face reality. So finally, I went to the suburbs of Copenhagen to see where the mole lives and meet with him and his wife. Ja, men Ulrik har noget, han gerne vil fortælle til dig. Ja, yeah. en rigtig lang historie. It is a long story, but let's cut to the ending. Så et andet, så er jeg lidt stolt af mig selv. Og håber du på en eller anden måde er lidt imponeret over det, jeg har prøvet at opnå, og det, jeg har prøvet at dokumentere for omverdenen. Jeg er bare rystet. Og jeg synes jo et eller andet sted, at du er en idiot, fordi du ikke har fortalt mig noget. Mm. Ja. Det er løgn på løgn. Jeg synes fandme, det er svært. Der, der er noget, jeg vil sige til Ulrik's forsvar. Eller det, er en, det er vigtigt at få med. Og det er, at Ulrik er et af de modigste mennesker, jeg nogensinde har mødt. Øhm, sådan i hverdagen, så ser man ham jo ikke som modig, eller så tænker man jo bare, kan du lige komme i gang med rengøringen? Lidt men, mere. Men, men det er han har jo trukket så meget for familien, ikke? Mere og mere og mere og mere, ikke? Altså, han forsvinder. Og nu er der gået... Til 11 år, jeg ved ikke om det. Ja. Jamen, det har været vanvittigt. Det har det jo nok. Det har været vanvittigt for mig. Også ikke at kunne fortælle dig. Det er også tit tænkt på, hvad tænker du, ikke? Øhm. Jeg har ikke tænkt så meget. Nej. Men jeg tænker mere, hvad der kommer til at ske nu, når det hele når vejen sinde. Og hvad det har af konsekvenser for os som familie. Du skal sidde derude? Ja. Jeg sidder herovre? Yes. The only thing left was an even more difficult conversation. Mit hjerte banker. Er du sindssyg? Mm -hmm. Og den der. Hello? Hello Alejandro. I can't see you. Oh, start video. Okay. Hello? How are you? Yes, fine. And you? Well, I'm fine. So that's nice. Alejandro, before we get started, um, I have a few things I want to tell you. Yes. Um, first of all, why I've been so interested in North Korea. Mm -hmm. And also to find out the truth about you. Um, all our meetings together has actually been filmed. And I've been acting like a mole because I'm making a film with you. And I would really much like you to meet the instructor who's been helping me through this movie. So I hope you will ask, answer his questions. So please meet him here. Hello, Alano. Yeah. Yes, hello. We meet again. Yeah. We are recording this conversation and I should inform you that uh, uh, everything is on tape and we basically know everything. So this is uh, the end of a very long story. Alano, are you there? Han har afbrudt. Han har afbrudt. Han øh, satte hånden over, kunne jeg se, og, og, og fundet på en stopknap. Da han gik på skærmen, der, der var jeg næsten klar til at løbe på toilettet. Men da jeg fik åbnet munden, 
der, der var jeg ligesom bare tilbage i, hvis man kan sige, i mulvarperollen. Men øh, ja. Vil du gerne være mulvarpe igen? Ikke på samme måde. Mm. Eller, man skal aldrig sige aldrig. Ulan. Det er godt. <laughs> Puh, ja. Og jeg, så kan vi se det igen? <laughs>